The direct materials budget always starts with the production budget. So once you have prepared your production budget, then you can go ahead and calculate your direct materials budget, direct labor budget, and then also your manufacturing overhead budget. First, take, take a look at direct materials budget. You start the direct materials budget with the quantity of direct materials needed for production. Now you do need to do a step before this. To figure out how much quantity of direct materials needed for production, you need to multiply the production by the number of units of raw material per unit. For, so for example, let's say that you are making 500 loaves of bread and each loaf of bread uses half a pound of flour. The quantity of direct materials needed for production would be 500 times half a pound or 250 pounds and that would be the quantity of direct materials needed for production. So that's your starting point. And for that you add your desired direct material ending inventory. Just like for production, you want to have a certain percentage of your following month's production as your desired ending material. When you add those two together, you get total quantity of direct materials needed. Then you subtract your direct materials of beginning inventory to come up with how much quantity of direct materials to purchase. Once you get the quantity of direct materials to purchase, you multiply that by the cost of your direct materials, giving you total cost of purchase. Um, so as a result, even though right now what you see is all units, you do have a dollar component. So getting back to what I told you earlier, the production budget is the only budget that is complete, calculated completely in units. This one is in units, but then we do switch over to dollars later on. Let's take a look at an example. Be sure to pause the video and read the question, and then we'll um, go through it. So they want us to prepare a direct materials budget for the first quarter that shows the number of computer chips needed for production and the dollar amount for the purchases. So in order to do that, these are the things that you need to look out for. You need to find out, again, your starting point is your production budget. So you need to find out how much you need to produce. They have given that to you in the table right here. They're going to produce 5,000 stuffed animals in January, 4-4 four, four in February, and so on. And then the next thing you need to do is try to figure out for the number of units produced, how much direct materials do you need? How much computer chips do you need? Somewhere here, they tell you that each animal uses up three computer chips. So you know that your direct materials is three times whatever you produce. Later on when you're trying to uh, calculate a dollar amount for your budget, it says each computer chip costs two dollars. Another thing to check for is beginning and ending inventory. What are their policies for beginning and ending inventory? Here they say that they require that 20% of the following month's production needs should be on hand. So we need to factor that into our calculation as well. So you would set up the problem like this. Again, your months this time up on top, and then you could calculate a quarter total. And then on the going down, you have your description of what you're going to calculate. So our starting point, point is units to be produced. They've already given you that number, so you can just fill that across the board here. You're just taking that from the table and filling in the number of units needed to be produced. For the quarter total, you just add across January, February, and March. Next, to figure out how much quantity of direct materials needed per unit, they told you that three computer chips are needed per unit, per soft toy. So you just multiply, you uh, put three all the way across, and then for the quantity, you just multiply the number of units to be produced by the quantity of direct materials per unit. So it's going to be 5,000 times 3 or 15,000. And you're going to do the same thing for February and March. And for the quarter, you would take the total of 14,200 and multiply it by 3, or you could add these numbers, 15,000, 13,200, and 14,400. Now the next step is to calculate desired ending inventory of direct materials. In the question, they told you that the desired ending inventory of direct materials is equal to 20% of the production needs. So you would look at production needs for February, 
which would be the 13,200, and calculate 20% of that as your desired ending inventory. Again, you would take your following month's production need, which is the 13,200 here, and multiply that by 20% to come up with your ending inventory for end of January. You would do the same thing for end of February. You would take March production needs and multiply that by 20%. Now for March ending inventory, you need April production figures. They've told you April production. You know that April production is 4,200 units. However, don't forget, you need to multiply that by the quantity of direct materials needed, which is 3, to come up with your quantity needs for production. And then you multiply that by 20% to calculate your ending inventory. So it's a three-step process. Don't forget, you take your 4,200 units that you need to produce in uh, April, you multiply that by 3 to calculate the quantity of direct materials needed for production. And then you multiply that by 20% to calculate your ending inventory. Now we get to the quarter figures. And you know that the ending inventory for the quarter, you can't add it across. You take the figure that you have for March, which is 2,520. Then that will give you the total quantity needed, which would be your quantity needed for production plus your desired ending inventory and you would do the you would add it across for February, March and for the quarter. Once you have that we need to calculate beginning inventory. Remember if they told you what beginning inventory is you would use that number but if they didn't you would have to calculate it the same way calculated ending inventory. We know that the beginning inventory of January is the same thing as ending inventory of December. How would they have calculated ending in December the last year? They would have taken January's quantity needed for production, which is 15,000, and multiplied that by 20%, and that's exactly what you're going to do here. So you take 15,000 and multiply that by 20%. Now for February, you've already done that calculation for ending inventory of January, so you can just take that figure and put it across. So for January and February, you're just going to look at your ending inventory for the previous month and put it there. And finally, for the quarter, beginning inventory, which one was the beginning inventory for the quarter? It's the number at the beginning of the quarter, which was January, which was 3,000. That's what you're going to put for the quarter number. So that gives you the quantity of direct materials you need to purchase. You can take your total quantity needed and subtract it by the beginning inventory during the month. And you're going to do that for every month and the quarter figures. Once you do that, we need to figure out how much total dollars we need to spend. You know that each computer chip costs two dollars. So we put two all the way across and then you multiply your quantity to purchase by that two dollars per unit to give you the total cost of direct materials that you need to purchase. So for January it would be 14,640 multiplied by 2 giving you 29,280 and you do that all the way through February, March and for the quarter.